we think about playing games with our dog, often we think about being outside, but there are a lot of games that we can play in the house. These help to keep our dogs mentally stimulated, physically occupied, and improve the bond between us. We can play indoor games when we aren't able to take them outside, when we want to burn off a bit of doggy energy, when we want our dog to exercise his brain instead of just his body, and just to have fun with our dogs and add more enjoyment and stimulation into their day. Most interactive toys involve working out how to get food or treats, and this taps into your dog's natural scavenging and hunting instincts, and sometimes also into their gnawing and chewing instincts too. We so often neglect these, but most dogs enjoy an outlet for these behaviours, and for many, having this outlet improves the behaviour as chewing acts as a stress reliever for a lot of dogs, as well as just being fun. The first, and probably still one of the best, is the Kong. Make sure the Kong you use is the right size for your dog, and make sure it's an original Kong and not a copy, as some aren't so chew-proof and so not so safe and others don't have the hole at the top, which is an important safety feature. Kongs, of course, are pretty boring on their own, but once you stuff them with food, they become irresistible to most dogs. Start off making it easy for the dog to get the food out, so they understand how it works and that there are treats in there. Once they've got the hang of it, you can make it far harder by packing the food in really tightly, so they have to work hard to get it out. Or you could even put it in the freezer and freeze it. This is especially good on hot days. To make your dog's dinner time more interesting, you can feed part or all of their dinner in a Kong, and you can even hide them in various places around the house so they can hunt them down too. Start by leaving them in plain sight so it's easy for the dog to find them. Then you can hide them half under something to start with, then making it harder as your dog gets really good at it. You might want to limit the rooms you do this in though, otherwise you'll end up with a dog who endlessly hunts under everything and excavates rooms in the hope of finding a stuffed Kong. If you want a more interactive food game, however, there are plenty to be found if you take a look in pet stores or on the internet. These can provide great problem-solving tasks for dogs to do, with your encouragement, of course. There's a huge range of these toys now, so you can decide if your dog is a poor dog or a nose dog, so how they solve these kind of problems, and get them the toys that suit them best. You don't have to spend a fortune though. Putting some food in an old toilet roll or kitchen towel roll and folding down the ends will give your dog a cheap, interactive dog toy. Cardboard boxes work well too, whether the dog has to pull them apart or even get inside them. Try putting a few pieces of food into an old plastic drinks bottle and see if the dog can work out how to get them out. Or hide pieces of food under a towel or a plastic plant pot or in an old sock and let them work out how to get them out. Always make sure that all these games are closely supervised though, that you're always using safe items and give your dog plenty of encouragement. We often underestimate just how good our dog's noses are too and how much they enjoy using them. Playing games that involve sniffing can be a real joy for many dogs, and every dog can do it. Start by putting a couple of treats on the floor quite close together, leading to a small pile of treats without your dog seeing you do it. Then you can bring them in and ask them to find it. Most dogs will look first for the treats, so helping them with the first few by tapping the floor will encourage them to sniff for them and then follow the treats to the larger reward. Then you can start to move them further apart so the dog has to use their nose even more to follow the trail. And once they become a sniffing expert, you can lay longer tracks, maybe to their dinner or to their favorite toy. Another really simple sniffing game can be giving your dog their dinner by scattering it in the garden. Hunting out each piece stimulates their nose and their scavenging and foraging instincts and means that dinner time takes far longer and is much more of an event than just 30 seconds of frantic eating from a bowl, which while easy, can be really boring for a dog. This works best if you only have one dog, as with multiple dogs, you don't know how much each dog is eating and you certainly don't want to encourage competition for food or even food guarding. And if you're garden proud or if you have a large garden, do this in one area only. 
playing games at all times, not just when you're out on walks, is one of the joys of dog ownership. It improves the bond between you, makes your dog's day more interesting and stimulating, and it gives your dog an outlet for many of their natural behaviours. And this in turn can help prevent behaviour problems that could arise from boredom or frustration. The secret to successful dog games is to be inventive. As long as it's safe, anything goes. And the other secret is to have as much fun as your dog does. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.